Alrighty folks, time for a bit of a much needed update on the old uh, two wheeled steed here. Um, project's been parked now for about last six months or so, um, mostly due to time constraints and uh, also to be honest uh, I didn't have the funds to get a battery. Uh, that would have suited me um, and I was to be honest damned if I was going to go putting um, oh any any kind of um, uh, had acids or anything into this so been just been getting back on it now with the past fortnight um, because I happened to get my hands on a battery now I hope we can see this in here I'm going to shut off that inspection lamp, it might make it easier. Now it's not the battery I wanted, um, but it, uh, it was enough to get me back on the project. Uh, probably can't see anything in there now, let's see if we can, a bit of extra light, here we go. Okay, let me get that hooked up here somewhere. Alright, so what we got in here is a basically a 48 vo volt uh, 20 I believe 25 amp hour lithium polymer battery um, it's made up out of a series of uh, four uh, separate blocks as I hope we'll be able to see in there now I should have really filmed this when I was doing it, but kind of didn't uh, didn't really get to it. And uh, there's a kind of a sandwich there going on with some HDPE uh, sheet and some 6mm threaded bar to hold everything in place. And down the bottom here then, see if I can maneuver myself in here. Uh, I'm not the most elastic person. Down the bottom here we have ourselves uh, some 25 mil angle steel forming a tray and on top of that to insulate the pack from the chassis we got ourselves some 6 mil a meter uh, clear polycarbonate now at the minute the pack is just basically sitting in there with uh, just some ties holding it just for initial tests and I will have to do a um, figure out. Not exactly going to make a film producer anyway, am I? Um, going to have to figure out a front shield on here, probably with some polycarbonate. Uh, but that's the battery. Now the beauty of this was that it was a battery um, that had been purchased for a project in work and uh, basically never took off so uh, I ended up picking this 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 baby up for far free now <coughs> it's got a resting voltage of over 60 volts and uh, I've been just doing some tests there with just increasing the current limit on the controller and I'm up to 250 amps uh, so far and at 250 battery amps the voltage only dropped to 59 volts um, so quite impressive um, I should get a better view of it from in here maybe maybe one of my worst videos ever I think so hopefully we can see in the front there a little bit on the top of the pack uh, you might be able to see that each uh, each pack is made up from two separate packs. They're in fact um, they're 4S2P packs and uh, they have a rating of 45C continuous and 90C for 10 seconds. Um, mats were never my strong point but uh, that's a lot of current so need to be very careful with these guys. Um, so we've got a disconnect here, uh, just on the top, we can, god damn it, come on camera, there we go, 
that's just a standard automotive battery cut off at the voltage we're at uh, I think it's probably it's probably probably okay um, I guess if I ever have to crack it open when there's 2000 amps flowing through this damn thing uh, I'll uh, I'll find out to my my detriment um, so what I also decided to do because the voltage is lower uh, than what I had planned uh, I decided to connect the motors in parallel instead of in series and um, the controller doesn't seem to have any difficulty with that so that's good uh, I will have to tune it a little bit it's, um, it's a little a few little um, problems with the throttle response so that's another day's work but all of the everything is basically hooked up in parallel there now and we're going back up to the controller which you can see the battery side of the controller there probably just about there's our kilovac main contactor which that looks loose isn't it or is it just me yeah that's just that's just me okay um so yeah this is this is really the battery now there's not a lot of energy here it's about a uh, 1.5 kilowatt hour so it's really only just for uh just for testing but uh, it sure is fun and i've uh i've made a few more marks on my shed floor here with the old uh the old burn out paradise scenario so yeah what else have we got let's see um Unfortunately, I lost my four headway cells uh, that I had in for the accessory battery here when I did the bottom balance on the car's traction battery. And I had those four cells fail on me, so uh, I basically had to get a friend to come up here and uh, pull them out on the, 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 the day uh, and bring them down to me where I was doing the bottom balance. Um, so what I decided to do was a little sheet of HDP uh, just uh, bolted in here and I have a lithium iron phosphate zippy um, 8.4 amp hour uh, it's just a little RC helicopter battery um, this is quite a powerful battery also and it's rated to I believe 30C continuous but uh, in this application it's not even going to come close to that um, got our fuse in this big uh, 400 amp fuse um, just uh, to allay anybody's fears um, although that does say 500 volts AC the data sheet for this particular part also uh, specifies I believe 10 kA at 250 volts DC so it is suitable for the application down in there you can probably just about see the uh, EV display uh, board with the Hall effect sensor um, I've actually got that going through the 35 square main battery cable there it's a bit messy at the minute but I've been really only just getting things uh, installed over the past couple of days just to see if we can get something happening here um, so everything else is as before main contactor auxiliary relays controller uh, all that kind of stuff is as was um, up here on the dash, I uh, hope we can make this out, we've got the actual EV display installed in the dash here, uh, that's where the old temperature gauge had been installed so I basically attacked it with a 51mm hole saw and uh, just basically drilled it out of there to be honest and uh, basically the, the display fits in there just perfectly um, I do have some concerns about the accuracy of the sensor on that so it'll be uh, I'm, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have to do some testing on it but that's another day's wor work but it does fit uh, quite 
well into the display in art I, I, I should say in, into the dash um, so that is about where we're at with the uh, upgrades at the minute and getting on with the project um, I don't know if you've seen the fuel tank I managed to get that uh, I don't know if I covered this on the last video it's been that long ago uh, I got the fuel tank sandblasted it's towards last autumn and uh, so that's going to be painted up um, and uh, let's see what else yeah because I'm going to have to build a charger inside the fuel tank um, still haven't made up my mind what kind of approach I'm going to take to the charger um, I'll probably just as the saying goes gunter something up for now just to uh, just to let the bike do a few test runs and uh, probably end up doing a maybe a little small version of the uh, EMW charger then to handle that for me um, BMS on this battery don't know yet honest answer um, suppose I'll just have to cut my cloth on that uh, it'll, it'll de depend what the hell happens to be honest um, I'll see what I can come, come up with and uh, let's see what else is there tachometer I need to sort out unfortunately that tack is not pulse driven it's current driven I think uh, full scale deflection is something like 50 milliamps to fit to 5000 rpm so I'm going to have to come up with a little something like a frequency to voltage converter uh, that will take the signal from the tack sender down there Oh, this camera really is crappy. Um, so the tax sender there, uh, or a little disc on it, um, and then send that into a little converter that'll drive that tachometer. Uh, speedo is cable driven, so I don't need to be concerned with that. So what I guess I'll do is I'll um, I'm just going to screw down this uh, bolt into the tank here. I'll stick the seat back on. Um, oh yeah, did have a little accident earlier. Just doing some uh, couple of calibration tests on the controller. I had put the front wheel up against the TIG here, and uh, this is one hell of a a, a heavy plant. That's uh, is well over a hundred kilos in that in that thing. It's an old style. TIG welder and I put the front wheel up against it and uh, this generally sits out about kind of sits out about here I can't see that either great um, and I just gave a little dig at the throttle and it basically shoved the thing back and it's actually bulged out the back wall of the shed so uh, that's a bit of advice folks don't uh, underestimate your um, your motorcycle okay uh, seat seat right okay let's stick the seat back on stick the seat back on okay, the seat is on so let's turn this beast on then so the first thing you want to do is turn on your key and you get your trusty LED headlight and uh, you've also got the neutral on there that basically uh, tells you that your controller is turned off so turn your kill switch on here the fan spool up we'll go to the pre-charge your neutral goes out and uh, just try and point this maybe back at the wheel here and give her a little shot at the throttle
little zoom in on the display here while I give her a few digs. Okay, now, I don't know about you guys, but that actually scares the pants off me, so um, I'm going to have to uh, get some of those volunteer test drivers uh, to test this thing out before I even think about sitting on it. Um, so right, that's about it. Um, probably a week or two away from, uh, depending on how I get on with the charger, maybe about a week or two away from a maiden voyage. So uh, stay tuned and um, I'll hopefully have updates uh, happening a little bit quicker than has been with this project.